first became interested in latex fashion and course it's probably in in the early 80s really um when i was at college um we were on the borders of soho so oh, and in those days late 70s early 80s all the sort of pawn shops and adult shops were all still there and doing tons of business so they were constantly bombarded by imagery wandering around in our sort of lunch hours and evenings and stuff like that so i was always aware of it i think really it's popularity like anything else in fashion, ebbs and flows, but because it's such an iconic and classic item and doesn't really change a great deal from something maybe even 300 years ago to what it is now, in the past year or so, has, has been influenced by lots of people and, and how they're looking back again. People like Dieter von Tees looking back to the 1940s and 1950s. So they're playing up the femininity uh, stereotype that was set in the 1930s and the 1950s and, and the 1800s and 1900s as well. I suppose what I love about corsets is what it does to a woman's shape. <laughs> I think that's the whole point of them. What makes a good corset is a corset that achieves what it's trying to achieve. So it needs to be well cut, well made, of solid construction, probably involves lacing and boning, and, and also some decorative interest as well. Again, I would say it's, it's never gone away. You know, it's, it's, a, it's such a classic item that you don't not have it. You can't... It, it, in the in the, the sort of fetish net, uh, BDSM circles, it's it's been there since day one, since there's been a BDSM ser- uh, sort of culture. I think it's probably also the aspect of a woman to see, to see her corset. Obviously, in Victorian times, was the height of eroticism. Um, and it was only one stage before seeing her naked. So, and but then there's the idealised form that the corset was was trying to achieve. So it was that sort of. Um, allure of promise. I think that's what it's about.